please can you tell me about anal gland problems in cats? Why do they develop them and what can we do to treat them? That's today's question. So this question was sent in by Lee, who's had cats um, for, uh, for a long, long time, but recently their nine-year-old cat has had to have anal gland surgery uh, because of an infection, and then she needs a regular checkup every couple of months, and then just the other day, the anal glands were full again. So what's going on here? Well, we'll start off by discussing what anal glands are. So the anal glands or anal sacs actually contain really strong smelling material that empties through ducts at around the three and nine o'clock um, position around the anus. So they empty when a cat defecates and that material kind of coats that stool and has the effect of marking a cat's territory and communicating with other cats in the area. Now it, really in cats it's not so much of a problem compared to dogs. Anal gland problems are pretty uncommon in cats although clearly they do happen and in the majority of cases it's actually normally due to soft stools. So if the stools aren't fully formed, if they're not a normal bulky stool, then that's not going to empty or help the anal glands to empty when they go to the toilet. And that can be for a number of reasons. So that soft stool can be because of diet, it could be due to an inflammatory bowel disease, due to parasitic disease, infections, and that just prevents that normal expression, which then leads to impaction of the anal glands. And I'll come on to that in a little bit. So other things that can, can cause problems with and stop the anal glands from emptying would be inflammation in the anal area. So that can effectively block those ducts and again stop those anal sacs from emptying. And then I do wonder sometimes about anatomical variation. So if the ducts are actually not normally kind of, if they're, they're normally they're fairly straight and wide, if they're too narrow or if they're twisted, um, and that can be because breed or individual variation, then that will help, uh, that, that will just reduce the emptying of the anal glands as well. Now I think that's something that dogs definitely get, whether cats get it as well, I'm not so sure. It's kind of a little bit of speculation, but I do wonder if that plays a role in a cat who is otherwise healthy, otherwise well, producing a normal bulky stool. Um, I wonder if there are some anatomical kind of problems there. And then finally, you can get masses within an anal gland as well. So they're really rare in cats. They're not very common in dogs, but they're really rare in cats, although they do happen. It's something called an adenocarcinoma. Um, but the bottom line is that it's a really nasty malignant mass. We need to get onto that quickly and we need to remove that quickly. Um, but that can also cause anal gland problems. So that's the cause. What happens is the glands become full up, they become impacted, that material then becomes infected and it bursts out into the surrounding tissue, which is really, really painful. Um, signs of that starting to develop would be scooting. Um, certainly dogs, they scoot, they'll rub their bottom along the ground um, quite a lot. Cats, not so much. They will often more be chewing or licking at their back end. They might also be painful when handled or when you're petting them and getting towards their back, they might become um, painful. They can also be grumpy and unsettled. So cats are great at trying to avoid sources of pain and they will change their behaviour. So if they think that you're going to hurt them, they're going to get pretty grumpy with you. So that's something that you might notice as well. And then how do we go about treating anal gland problems in cats? Well, to start with, if there is a repeat problem, then we can express them on a regular basis. That's not really treating and preventing, you know, that's not really preventing the problem, but it's it's treating it before it's developing a painful abscess. We can give diet changes if we've got loose stools, so that could be switching to a hypoallergenic diet in the case of inflammatory bowel disease. We can increase the fibre in the diet, that could be adding something like pumpkin or metamucil to the diet. Um, with any kind of diet change or when you're adding anything to the diet, you should discuss that with your vet because that won't be desirable in some cases, and in some cases it might be detrimental to your cat's health. Also, if we're trying to get to the bottom of why a cat has got loose stools, we might need to do some laboratory tests, so culture and looking under the microscope, that kind of thing. And then another consideration is actually surgical removal. So for a cat who is having repeated anal gland problems, then we can actually remove them. Now that obviously will eliminate that risk and that problem um, kind of for the for the for the rest of their life. There is a low risk of a cat developing faecal incontinence after having their anal glands removed. It's a very low risk, but it's definitely something to consider. Um, but really in the majority of cases we can manage them with dietary changes, trying to find the underlying cause and then regular expression for those that still have problems with their anal glands filling up. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.